Trudeau caused the crisis. Let's start with that. He unleashed chaos in our immigration system. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. It's an amazing to be in the East Coast here in St. John, standing with common sense Canadians for our common sense conservative plan to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. I was just in Moncton meeting with workers. Soon I'll meet with St. John police, business leaders, and other local common sense Canadians. Uh, what I'm hearing so far is that after eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost. After eight years of Trudeau, everything costs more. People have to line up. Two million Canadians line up at food banks every single month in, in scenes that are reminiscent of the Great Depression. 32% of charities are turning people away because they've run out of money. 8,000 people have signed up for a Facebook network that shares tips on how to jump into a dumpster in order to get yourself a meal, because that's how desperate people have become. I just learned that a local military base uh, has 50 of its members going to the food bank here in New Brunswick. We've just come from St. John's, Newfoundland, where I met with the food bank there. Their demand is up 45% in four years, in part because Trudeau's carbon tax on the farmers who, and fishers who produce the food and the truckers who ship the food. They're having to bail out other food banks that are worried they might have to go under. After eight years of Trudeau in St. John's, Things have gotten so desperate that families cannot bury their deceased loved ones. There are 28 dead bodies in chilling containers outside of the hospital in St. John's next to a dumpster because their families cannot afford a burial or a cre cremation. This would have been unimaginable after, before Justin Trudeau. He's doubled housing costs after having promised to bring them down. Rents up over 100%, mortgage payments up 100%. A, a down payment takes 25 years to save up in Toronto. You used to be able to pay off a mortgage in that time. 67% of Canadians believe, after eight, per, eight years of Trudeau, that the next generation will be worse off than the one that came before. 50 military families in Aramunk, New Brunswick, are using a, a, a food bank. We have CBC Nova Scotia reporting that Nova Scotians got extreme power bills uh, recently, which are leaving many of them choosing between eating and turning the lights on. There are now 35, 35 homeless encampments in Halifax. All of these things would have been unimaginable before Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, not worth the crime, not worth the corruption, and not worth the country we know and love. The good news is life was not like this before Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. Common sense conservatives are fighting back, and that's what brings me here today. Trudeau's April 1st carbon tax hike of 23% is scheduled to take effect in just a few weeks, April Fool's Day, and with Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, the joke is on you. Trudeau will hike gas prices at stations like this one. Home heating bills will rise across the country. Farmers, fishermen, truckers who all bring us food will be paying more and passing on those prices at the grocery store to Canadians who are already starving. That's why common sense conservatives are standing with 70% of Canadians in the polls and 70% of provincial premiers who have called for Trudeau to spike the hike, cancel this heartless and cruel April 1st tax hike. There will be two common sense conservative motions before the House of Commons next week. Liberal and NDP members of parliament will have to decide whether they vote for their constituents' affordable gas, food, and homes, or whether they will vote with Justin Trudeau to dig deeper into the pockets 
of Canadians who are freezing and starving. That will be the decision. All Conservatives, thank you. All, you can see where people stand here. They're on side with the common sense Conservatives to spike the, the hike and ax the tax. We have a common sense plan to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We're going to have abundant and affordable energy again. Canadians will bring home powerful paychecks that buy affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. And that will be the choice. Either there will be a costly coalition of Trudeau and the NDP who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. That's the choice. Let's bring it home. Hi, right, John Chilbeck with Brunswick News. Do you think the Energy East pipeline project could be revived? And if so, how would you help that come along as Prime Minister if you're elected? I, I strongly supported the Energy East pipeline. I think it is insane that we are in, here in St. John, we are importing 130,000 barrels of Saudi Arabian Nigerian oil at the same time as our Western pr producers are blocked from selling their product to other Canadians. Um, Justin Trudeau killed the Energy East pipeline. His Liberal M New Brunswick MPs helped him kill it. They did nothing to champion the jobs of New Brunswickers or of Western Canadians. Um, common sense Conservatives will repeal C the unconstitutional C69 that blocks development and replace it with a new law that protects the environment, consults First Nations, but gets things built. And uh, I will support Canadian pipelines that deliver Canadian energy to Canadian markets and are built with Canadian steel. That's what it means to bring it home. By the way, today, if we had the Energy East pipeline, we could pump Western petroleum, put it on a ship, send it to Europe, break European dependence on Putin. Justin Trudeau has a pro-Putin energy policy. He's blocked natural gas liquefaction projects and the Energy East Pipeline, which would have allowed the Europeans to, supply, to power their economy with clean Canadian energy rather than dirty Russian oil and gas. So my common sense plan is the opposite. It's pro-Canadian. It turns dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Sarah Plowman, CTV News. Um, the industrial carbon tax, like any corporate tax, gets passed along to consumers. So Mr. Polyev, would you cancel this, or would you keep the industrial carbon tax? Well, most heavy industry has an exemption from the carbon tax. The uh, carbon tax applies on small business, small medium-sized businesses, some factories, and all consumers. But large cement plants um, and other industrial factories are exempt. They either are under regulatory regimes like the tier system in Alberta uh, or the output-based production systems in Ontario. Uh, they have a carbon tax exemption. Um, I'm not going to slap a new carbon tax on anybody. I'm going to ax the tax to bring home lower energy prices and incentivize more uh, clean uh, our industry to become even greener and even cleaner. We're also going to export our clean, green Canadian energy to the world by repealing C69 so that projects can get built. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Jacques Fortra from CBC News. This is a question for my colleagues in Ottawa. Should the Prime Minister have said yes to Premier Legault's demand to transfer all immigration powers to Quebec? The tr Trudeau caused the crisis. Let's start with that. He unleashed chaos in our immigration system by keeping Roxham Road open for years after the Americans offered to close it by removing the, vec the, the, the visa requirement for Mexico that conservatives, common sense conservatives had put in place, which led asylum claims to rise from 250 to 17,000. 
uh, in just eight years with n almost 90% of those claims not found to be legitimate by the Immigration Refugee Board. Um, more than half of the infl intake of refugees have been going to Quebec, even though that province has only 22% of the national population. Obviously, that has put massive, by, by, the, by the Liberal government's own admission, that has put massive strain on housing and social services. My commitment is to reinstate common sense conservative immigration policies that, that block illegal immigration, that discourage false asylum claims, that bring legitimate refugees, um, economic immigrants, and family members here to, to be part of, the, the, of, of Canada, but do so in an orderly fashion with numbers that uh, line up with the availability of social services and housing. And of course, we would work with all provinces, including Quebec, to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll have time for one more question. Thank you. Um, you're scheduled to have a dinner this evening with the with Premier Higgs. Um, I just wondered what you thought of your relationship. What is your relationship with Premier Higgs, and what policies are you aligned on? First and foremost, the carbon tax. Premier Higgs has joined with common sense conservatives across the country to axe the tax. And tonight, I will thank him and all New Brunswick conservatives for locking arms with us on that. Premier Higgs and all New Brunswick conservatives understand that people in places like St. John, in Moncton, in Fredericton can't afford yet another Trudeau tax. Uh, what they need is affordable, abundant energy, and that's what they will get when I ax the tax. But the last thing we want is for, you know, after I ax the tax, for there to be another Trudeau-style provincial government that puts it back on. And that's the risk. Whenever you vote Liberal, you know you should hold on to your wallet because they'll be coming for your money. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let's bring it home.